we are here with Denise Dillon and senior guard Sarah Curran from Drexel. And coach, your team was 19 and 14 last year, and you've also gone to the WNIT the last six of seven years. What has it been about your team that's made you have that type of sustained excellence, especially on the defensive end? Uh, I would say just finding the consistency with the players that we were bringing in and watching them develop uh, throughout their career with us, uh, growing into a role uh, each and every year developing that role and uh, adding some responsibilities. And again, they set the precedence, the upperclassmen working with the younger players and then just continuing to uh, encourage the success that we've had. And if they're willing to, to work and I get it together, then uh, some good things happen. Right, and you graduated the second leading scorer in your per, in your team last year, Rachel Pearson. But you bring back three starters, and the continuity of that. How has that helped this year in the preseason? Oh, it, it certainly helps. Um, it, it was a, a great loss in uh, Rachel Pearson and Jackie Sleuth. Uh, Rachel Pearson not only is a scorer, but we said a great defender. Uh, that's the area that uh, we're really zeroing in on with. Uh, this group, you know, we, we know we have some scoring power and Sarah Karen here with us, uh, Megan Crete and uh, Jess Pilecchio, but we, we really need to get everyone on board with uh, the defense and what needs to be done, uh, stopping great guards uh, in our conference. And uh, again, the post play is always a battle. Right. And Sarah, you have been so consistent over the course of your career. Last year, you had 11 games where you scored over 20 points for your team and you're the leading scorer. This year, knowing that team's game plan for you, how do you change aspects of your game and surprise the opponents? Um, I think, I guess the biggest thing is to just build on what I've already um, been doing in the past. So working on new moves, working on things that um, I needed to improve on, um, getting shots up every day, continuing to do that. And then it's really just uh, what Denise like emphasizes is like set new screens, like do the little things and then like that will help me like get open and do all that. And as a leader this season, what have you shared with the younger players on the team in terms of those kinds of expectations in terms of work ethic? Yeah, um, I mean, taking it one game at a time, definitely, because it can be overwhelming when you're a freshman and we have four, so they get a little nervous sometimes, but it, start with practice, do your two, three hours there, and then from there you move on and take each game, like focus on what we have to do for this game, and then we'll move on to the next game. Mm -hmm. And coach, what have you seen from your four freshmen thus far in terms of their transition to the collegiate level? Well, what I'd say I was most pleased with uh, their initial attitude, just about uh, their willingness to learn and extremely coachable. I, I think they're a talented group, uh, which certainly helps. But when you have talent and then that willingness to learn and really look up to their upperclassmen, that's something special. So I think it'll tie in, it'll work nicely together. And we have seven underclassmen, so we're definitely outnumbered with our younger group, <laughs> but with the experience of our upperclassmen, them being veterans, I think they can really uh, come together at the right time. And you also have three international players <laughs> right. on the team as well. And, and I'll ask that to both of you. How has that been? Uh, have there been any language barriers or have there been any difficulties in terms of communicating what you want on the court? Well, I think for all players, the terminology is different. You know, they hear something different in high school than they right. uh, do at our level. The whole game changes in the right. sense of speed and quickness. But for the international players, uh, it, it certainly is. The way we look, approach it, and I'm aware with having a number of international players in the past, but just telling our players, like they hear what we're saying, but then they have to translate into their language yeah, right. and then back <laughs> to English. So right, right. It, it certainly is that challenge. But with experience, they certainly get better. I mean, you see tests and Eileen as sophomores now, they're so much more comfortable. And then Anna as a freshman uh, is just, again, watching, learning, and just trying to follow suit. She's not getting too caught up in uh, the, the communication part, but uh, following their lead. And how is that playing with international players? Yeah, I mean, I think basketball is one thing that, um, I mean, it's one thing we all have in common. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the game doesn't change. Like, you got to put the ball in the basket and right. you got to do the little <laughs> things. So it makes it easier to play with them because, I mean, they know how to play basketball. And like Denise said, like, they're a talented group. Mm -hmm. So it definitely helps. Makes it easy. Yeah. And the postseason play for you has been consistently excellent. You've gone to the WNIT six of the seven seasons. This year, 
what do you want for your team in terms of breaking that mold in the WNIT and getting back to the NCAA tournament? Right. Well, that's exactly what you want. You know, every uh, team in the country is talking about right. trying to win their conference, get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, but it is something, a goal that we had set with this group uh, early. And uh, in Sarah's career now with Meg Creighton being a fifth year uh, senior and uh, Jess Plecchio as well. It's something they strive for and I, I think that's their willingness to work every day of practice. It's uh, a goal, a vision we have. We don't talk about it too often. We say you know, everything will take care of itself if you're doing the right things. But just for our conference, I, I think we're solid, we're strong, but it's winning those out of conference games uh, to really put yourself on, on the board uh, and people talking about your team. And then when conference play rolls around, uh, doing what you know needs to be done and uh, getting uh, the job done. But it, it does start now and keeping that vision and just that willingness to uh, create your own destiny there. That's right. And in 2018, the CAA tournament will right. be at Drexel. What would that mean for your program at that time? Well, it's, it's huge. It's special. You know, we're uh, happy about uh, the environment of being on campus, having it again with some local players that we have. It's unfortunate that it's not this year. Right. You know, with Meg and Sarah being so close. Yes. But, uh, it is, it's knowing what we've done at the DAC, the, the renovations look tremendous. I know you'll all be excited to see it. Uh, so we're definitely in a good position to be hosting a big tournament. And Sarah, before you go, just real quickly, in one word, describe what you want your legacy to be at Drexel. Oh boy, that's hard. Um, I don't know. I guess. Or two. I guess commitment. You, commitment, I love yeah. it. I love it. We'll, we'll be looking for that commitment on the court. Ladies, thank you so much for thank your you. time. We're gonna